this beading here. Okay. So let's look at this psychiatric emergencies. Okay. It is true, you can't always see the issue, you don't know what's taking place, but uh, different psychiatric emergencies, you may intervene and, and save a life, you know, because that intervention, uh, continuous assessment is always very important. The disorder is just an abnormal mental condition of some sort, behavior, where they affect themselves, they're not really sure where they are, uh, what, what's taking place. You know, are they hallucinating? Uh, or do they have this dysfunctional, very dysfunctional view of life type thing? You know, where it's not just a different in opinion, but it, it's really dysfunctional. All right, we'll, we'll break that down in a few minutes. Okay, they may have medical problems, not, not behavioral problems, but physical problems. Uh, metabolic problems, electrolytes. Uh, if this person gets an electrolyte disorder, it will it will seem like they're having a, a psychiatric emergency. I've picked up patients that have UTIs, urinary tract infections, that they they appear like they're having some sort of psychotic breakdown. Okay, so uh, metabolic, electrical uh, seizures. They get. Uh, nutritional type of things out of whack uh, people eating dirt you have the urge to eat dirt do you ever get that this urge to eat like dirt that's good because if you had the urge to eat dirt that would tell you that your magnesium levels were out of whack you have a like mm, that looks like a good section of dirt I'm gonna eat some of that you know uh, Drugs, toxins, different things, uh, where you get them on the street, where, uh, wherever, work, run across them at work, right? stroke, TIA, mechanical, you know, bleeds, infections, uh, infections, a very high temperature can cause someone to seem like they have a, like a mental breakdown, or they might be start talking disillusional, is that a word? Delusional. Delusional, yeah, out of their head, right? And Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, all these different things may lead you to think that, but they're actually medical, okay? They're not a psychiatric problem. The other things that you look at in, when you do your general first impression, grooming, you know, uh, they lose the sense that they need to bathe and comb their hair if they have hair. Uh, or, or wear clothes, or uh, different things. I mean, they're not in Walmart, so I know that people in Walmart they don't wear clothes, but they're not psychotic. They're just Walmartians, right? <laughs> okay, but the uh, you'll see different just grooming habits. They they get to where they don't want to take a bath. Okay, they don't want to shower. Uh, they do any do anything wear clean clothes. They've had on the same clothes for three months, you know, and they haven't bathed for three months. So those, those are different things. Behavior, you, you, you get this different, just this sort of bizarre behavior, okay? Now it's a lot different than the behavior that you, that you see in the hallway, right? That's not psychotic behavior. That's just bad manner. Okay, so don't get the two confused. They just haven't been taught the, the way they should do things in, indoors. All right? uh, that's not necessarily psychotic. You do break down into some behavior that, you know, it is psychotic. It would fall into the psychiatric things, okay? Uh, you know, it, it's hard to say, but I mean, the, the way that they, some people, what they do in the men's bathroom, okay, you, you have to wonder if you have a screw loose or not. Are you, you know, there's some, is it just, you haven't been taught that that's not what to do? 
or you have a, a mental dysfunction, okay? Because sometimes you think that they have a mental dysfunction, okay? For what people do. So, uh, responses that people give you, different speech patterns. You get people who, you know, they're pacing and I'm not psychotic, I'm just a pacer, by the way. But the, uh, I may be a little psychotic. Anyway, uh, the responses they get, the speech they get, the, the actions that they do. And so, uh, all that sort of judged on sort of a social norm, right? That's why we bring Mallory in and she's, she's going to clear some of this up. Is this just bad behavior or is this psychological? Is there something wrong upstairs? Okay. And it, a lot of it has to do with those serotonin levels, dopamine levels of, of the brain. Uh, so anyway, unusual mo movements like they, they, they rush up to you or they, you know, they're, they're circling or, or different place. They're not oriented. They don't know what person, place, time, and event is. So there's there's problems there that that takes place. Everybody sort of understands the social norm, right? And then anything outside the social norm, you have to break it down. Is it just bad behavior, or is it psychological? Why, why are they Why are they doing these two things? Okay, a lot of times it's just bad behavior. It's not necessarily psychological. So, re recall abstract thinking. Can they think outside the box? Uh, are they able to put thoughts together and think outside the box, or are they just one one line of thinking, one thinking pattern? Where where are their surroundings? A lot of uh, psychological emergencies. They're not aware. They know where they are, but they're just not really aware of what what's around them. They, that's the person that you see. Uh, they know that they're in what city they're in. They're in the middle of town, but they may be walking up and down the middle of the street. They're not aware of their surroundings, that they're walking in the middle of traffic. Okay? Now, that doesn't mean the, the, the ones leaving the building here that walk in the middle of the road, right? They're just stupid. Mm -hmm. They're not, it's not psychological. But this person here, they they're walking in the middle of the street and they're not aware of all the cars that are around them. Do, do, do they do things that seem to be threatening, you know? Uh, and then, dystonia. So that they, uh, persons, a disorder in which a person's muscles contract uncontrollably. So they, they have these little jerks or, or, or contractions and then whatever this is because you can tell I had to sort of cut and paste it because I didn't know what it was I looked it up Google's my friend okay stiff jerking movements in the face of the body that they can't control uh, uh, and, and that could be medical that could be psychological I actually seen the nurse the other day doing that she had this weird sort of twitch to her face while she was eating without staring you know I was like looking at her and she, she would do the same thing over and over when she, she was eating beef jerky or something and she would do the same sort of weird twitch in her face over and over it's like that's ab, ab, that's abnormal I'm thinking that you know I put that filter on and I didn't ask her what's wrong with your face you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying but she had this sort of weird weird twitch to her but anyway so just vocabulary for us, nothing really to that you would want to try to memorize. The, they could have hallucinations, uh, phobias. You know, hallucinations are a big problem because they're hallucinating and they're not really sure what you are. But right? they could have you. You could be standing in front of them and they're hallucinating that you are something else. Okay, and. Um, so they're, again, they go into this fight or flight, so they could be very violent and very strong. So hallucinations are a problem. Delusional thinking, you know, uh, phobias, they're scared of the, 
they're scared of gray, so I'm not going to step over on the gray mats, or I'm, I'm, I'm scared of white colors or different colors. Or uh, if, if you go to Google and look up all the phobias, that's crazy. How many different phobias there are? People are scared of all. They name it all. They sort of name all these phobias people are, are scared of, you know. I'm scared of running out of food bell. That's a phobia. And it happened. We all, you were around during the crisis, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the massive recall. The recall? I was psychotic. <laughs> I had psychological emergencies. That, I'm telling you, that was a rough time in my life. I had to take a pill. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to revert to it. I know I should be ashamed of this, but I'll go ahead and admit it. We're, we're among friends, I'll, I'll admit it. During the crisis, I ate some hogging dogs. Yeah. It was a low point in my life, but I ate some hogging dogs to get through it. Huh? How do you sleep at night? I don't know. <laughs> I take a pill. I ate some ice cream that was on the recall list. My wife found it in the freezer at work, and I said, bring it home. She goes, it's on the list. It has the number that it's on the list to recall. Bring it home. I can live with the things that it would cause. Bring that bucket home. Stayed up right now, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> What 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 was it causing anyway? I can't even remember. Like this? Did huh? someone die from it or something? Yeah, it gave real bad diarrhea and vomiting. Um, nothing big. Yeah, I mean, I I can control that. I can take medicine to control that. But anyway, it was a rough time. I'm glad it's over. I mean, come on, it's only a little sickness. Why would we call all the ice cream? I mean, jeez. Don't think so. Huh? Don't juice it. Mm. How long do you think you could go without eating any kind of ice cream? Ooh. Why would you ask that? <laughs> 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 why, why would you Why would you want, want me to go, to go there and think that? Oh. Why do I carry off it? Mm, mm -mm. That killed the cat. <clears throat> Other things that we look at, sort of psychological or bad behavior, we have to discern that. Normal mood, are they in their normal mood? Are they angry, right? irritable, very rapid emotional type of, of swing back and forth? Okay, so that's, that's something that we all, always, are they rational in their decision making? Or questions? See, that was an irrational question. <laughs> you guys suffer if it came quick because I still eat ice cream and I just chew it everywhere. Excuse me, it's the ice cream. <laughs> it's the ice cream, sorry. <laughs> it's only gas. But you guys are scaring me talking about this no more bluebell. <laughs> and you know that bluebell is the only ice cream. Right? There's when I mention ice cream, I'm talking about bluebell. There's no other ice cream. It is all other ice creams are not ice. It's not ice cream. Really? So if you saw them create the ice cream, it was in your it was sludge. But I ate it anyway. I mean. <laughs> Can they make, you know what a rational decision is, right? Do, do I wait until payday to, to, to get money or do I go rob the bank? Waiting until payday would be rational, robbing the bank would be irrational, correct? Yeah. So, uh, do, I, do I go out in front of the school and poo or do I go to the bathroom and poo? which is rational and irrational, right? But they can't separate the two, okay? So, something that you do, 
But like I say, hey, look for physical signs, sun, sudden onset, signs and symptoms, pupillary changes like with medication, excessive salivation. We'll get into some of this. This some of this later deals with poisonings, okay, hazardous materials, okay. Are they diabetic? Are they throwing off ketones down here with unusual odors on their breath, right? Uh, so we have anxiety is one of the disorders, and again, uh, Mallory's going to come in with her professional background and, and uh, mop this up for me. But it's a state of uneasiness, agitation, you're, you're, you have this anxiety and, and restlessness, okay? Anxiety doesn't, a lot of people have anxiety problems, okay? Um, I'm not, hey, hey. It's so hard. Sometimes. I'm not one of them, okay? So uh, panic attacks, we don't have those either, but you people can get panic attacks, a sudden onset or something that they can't control, and they get these panic attacks. And, and they're real, and they cause problems, okay? And then the phobias, where it's this irrational thing that, that's triggered, right? I mean, it's, it's if, if I had a phobia, it would be, I wake up in the morning and there's no blue, I mean, Scared to death of that. Okay. But oh, can't even think about that. Thanks for bringing that up. What, the thought of like going to sleep though, like closed down. Like, not a thing on the bank of. Why, why do you keep talking? <laughs> <laughs> why? He would probably <laughs> rob a bank to buy them out. To buy them out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That seems like a rational decision, though. You would, uh, yeah. you'd see me on the news. <laughs> Why'd you rob that bank to buy Bluebells? <laughs> You're causing a little anxiety here. I just want you to know. <laughs> Agitation and restlessness. Okay? <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, a lot of these can be, the patient can be talked down through that. Some of it requires medication. You know, it, it just depends. Bipolar, this gets a bad term every once in a while because of the fact that, uh, you know, someone gets mad and they say, oh, they're bipolar. No, they're just mad, you know, okay? Uh, bipolar is, is a lot different. And this is where the, the patients who are bipolar, they go definitely from a very high to a very low. This is where they stop bathing. They stop eating. They get very, very... Uh, way different mood swings okay so it's it's just not a being mad okay they it's more of a phase where they're they're very irritated and they're they lose rational thought and then they they get uh where where they don't care anymore anxiety panic attacks these different things bipolar uh you would be shocked google can tell you how many medical professionals are diagnosed with bipolar, anxiety problems? How many medical professionals take uh, antipsychotic medication? Okay, antidepressants. You ever heard that one? <laughs> There's a lot of them. There is. I've worked with a lot of them. Okay, as long as you, they stay on the medication, all good. But they, they, they start thinking about, hey, I'm, I'm feeling all good. So they stop taking their medication. And then, all bad. Right? And you wonder, what happened to you? You know? And if you know their background, then you, you make sure that you, take, that you stop taking your medication. There's a lot of, a lot of, especially in the emergency department, in critical care medicine, there's a lot of people there. Okay? So... We'll get more of a clinical thing. I'm just throwing up definitions for you, okay? But uh, when our psychologist comes in and things. Depression, clinical depression. Everybody gets sad, right? Yeah. You know, but uh, clinical depression is like where you can't get out of bed. Suicides are factored in. You start withdrawing from people. Most of us humans are supposed to be people, people. We're supposed to. The, the norm is to be around people, okay? I don't like being around a lot of people, but social, 
we're social beings. We should be. We shouldn't be withdrawn from society. Okay, I mean locked in a box. It's okay for solitude. That's the difference between being withdrawn. Okay, solitude is good. Being social is is good too. Okay, and that doesn't mean with a lot of people. That could only mean with like a handful of people. Okay. But this means I'm withdrawn from everybody, you know. Someone starts t keeps talking about the end of Bluebell, and I start crying, right? <laughs> uh, appetite changes, sleeping changes, all these different decisions go into depression, and depression is a is an imbalance. Uh, like serotonin is one of them, the one I think of off the top of my head, right? It's not just a myth that they can't control their emotions, it's actually a chemical imbalance that uh, takes place. And then dementia, all right? Uh, the, the patient with dementia or OBS, organic brain syndrome, what they get into is they're literally the brain. I've seen one at UT Southwestern, the brain and the, in dementia, the gaps. I forget the real names of them, but the gaps in between the the the, uh, the surface of the brain widens out. Okay, uh, these patients here they do typically uh, get violent, potentially dangerous to they become really strong and they they become dangerous to themselves. Okay, they're very hard to handle. A lot of times they do end up in a nursing facility because the family can't hand, handle the patient with dementia. Okay. Uh, I would almost wish for any kind of death except the dementia. Okay. You know, cut my juggler before I get dementia. <laughs> uh, so anyhow, so the uh, one one thing to decrease that is continuous learning. By the way, learn learn daily. Use the, use the brain, it keeps it healthy. Just a, just a side note. Right. See, man, schizophrenia. You got little Susie and Satan. Okay. Uh, delusions, hallucinations. Okay. Canatonic behavior. Can, can, is that what you're saying? Can, 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 catatonic behavior. Okay. Uh, different movements, so if they're, if they're canatonic, catatonic, uh, they're just sort of in a stupor, they're just sort of there, they're not really functional, almost like they're unresponsive, but they, they can actually respond to you, okay? Thought, speech, uh, so schizophrenia, the, a spectrum there. It's it's a lot. It's it's a lot to look look into. Malaria. Give us some further insight on that. Okay. Paranoia, unwanted trust. Okay. That's that's the and, and this the may a big driver of paranoia is. Illegal recreational drug use that develops that. A uh, lot of lot of uh, people who smoke marijuana on a long term basis become very paranoid. Okay, so they uh, and I don't think it's I don't think it deals with that they're doing something illegal. I think it's something to do with the uh, the the drug itself. The problem with paranoia is. Just like it says, they, it's unpredictable and they can become very aggressive. If it's a paranoid of what you're doing, they don't trust you what what you're doing. Okay, so that's a that's a big problem. You know anybody that's really paranoid? No. Psychosis, just this patient, again, this is just definitions we're running through right quick. Out of touch reality, okay, They're, they have no, they have no clue on what's real or 
or, or false, okay? The uh, they introduced to do this uh, psychosis, hallucinations again, illusions, you know, uh, know anybody there? <laughs> yeah, it's most of your teachers, but. Okay. Substance abuse or addictive disorders, drugs and alcohol, we talked about that during sub substance abuse, inhaled, inhalants, uh, hypnotics, right, opioids, sedatives, other stimulants, right, the, uh, that, that can cause irrational behavior, okay. The, uh, most people, what, what is the big deal with alcohol and drugs? What does it lower? Y'all know that word, what it, what it lowers? Yeah, it does lower pain, it lowers your pain threshold, okay? But I, I promise you, every bad thing that happens to you, uh, is that the right, right way to say that? Everything that you regret that, that that's bad will probably happen during a period of intoxication. That's controllable, that you can control. That's a better way to say it. Everything that you can control that happens to you that's really bad and you, you have a lot of regrets will happen during either drug use or uh, intoxication. You think that's a true statement? Mm. Huh? You said I don't know. Yeah, nobody wants to admit, I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I regret doing okay. that tumbling pass that destroyed my knee, but none of those were. Yeah. Better. But that's that's sports related. Okay. <laughs> this this is here true because of the fact that uh, this person that's at this frat party, they're really intoxicated, they're gonna do something that uh, that they don't regret because the fact that alcohol and drugs lower your inhibition. You heard that word before? Impairs your judgment. Your judgment, yeah. It impairs your judgment. You wouldn't do things, you wouldn't do that normally, but you'll do it when you're intoxicated. Does that make sense? Okay. So uh, you're, you're not at, at a party of 30 or 40 people. You're at a pool party, 30, 40 people, you're not going to skin, go skinny dipping. Right? Norm, normal things say, I'm not going to jump in that pool without any clothes on. When, when the person's intoxicated, so they'll go ahead and jump in the pool without any clothes on because they're drunk. They don't care. They're in a vision there. And then they wake up in the morning and then they see it all over wherever, right? Social media. Right? You know, the, I mean, you can just almost count the count the regrets in in, in that sort of line of, of progression, okay? Because the person will always wake up and go, "Ooh, wish I wouldn't have done that." Right? So, anyway, uh, not necessarily psychological, but just behavioral, right? But it can become psychological uh, with with long-term abuse and addictive abuse over it. Okay. Here's one that if you stay in medicine, uh, especially emergency medicine or or critical care medicine, if you're going to be that ER doctor or ER nurse, okay. PTSD. This has been around a long, long time. They just named it, okay, over the recent years. Okay. It's, it's always been around. We've always called it something else, okay? So PTSD has always been there. They just came with, with the name. Same way with AIDS. They don't really know how long AIDS have been around. They just, they just gave it a name in the 80s, okay? It, they, they say this thing, this has probably been around for decades and decades and decades. We just didn't know what it was. Right. So, uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome or disorder right? uh, we've talked about this briefly in, in the past before you have to learn how to cope with your stress okay 
Uh, you have to have good cope, coping mechanisms with, with stress. Uh, you, could, you could probably get, you, you need these good coping mechanisms in, in college as well, right? Not that you could really get PTSD from college, but you could get that what? Epigastric thing. So, uh, experience a lot of trauma. People who work in EMS, they see a lot of bad things, okay? Those bad things can get to you if you don't deal with them, okay, in a healthy way. So uh, you, you have to learn how to, you, you have to learn how to deal with that or you just won't stay in that field very long, okay? Uh, deal, deal, with, deal with the bad things, okay? And uh, we can go into all that, but a, a lot of it is, how, you, how you're going to deal with that healthy, right? Healthy ways to deal with it. Uh, so this is something that you develop o over a period period of time, but it is big for for healthcare providers. You know, you, you hear people with PTSD; they always come back like people who were in the war or something, Afghanistan or Iraq, right? But uh, you spend long enough time in emergency medicine, you're, you're going to see a lot of bad things that you're going to have to deal with. And uh, you, you deal with them appropriately and, and healthy. And just find that avenue on, on how you're going to do that. Uh, not, it, it's a learned, learned thing that you can do. Okay? Extra... Para, help me out. Okay. Dopamine, like we talked about, these ser serotonin, they block the dopamine. Involuntary sort of muscles. Some of the, some of these things that we're talking about is caused because of the, actually the, of the medicine involved in it. Okay. So the the medication that the psychiatric medications that they take. There's too many to remember, okay? Uh, EMS-wise, EMT-wise, because we treat signs and symptoms, pre-sensation, right? We look at the signs and symptoms, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna treat the patient, we're gonna do, do a good assessment if possible. So if you have that psych psychiatric emergency, well, that patient's not allowing you to do anything. You have to restrain them and transport them, and they're, you can't do anything. That's where your good documentation skills come in. You don't always have to have a blood pressure and pulse rate and all that, okay? Don't put yourself out at risk or injure the patient trying to get a blood pressure. You don't have to have that. You just have to document it. The patient was too agitated, too violent to, take, to get vital signs, right? Patient would not answer questions. Those those type of things. Okay. You deal a lot, a lot with attempted suicides. I know that during the training we had at the beginning of the year, they say that the holiday season is not a cause of increased attempted suicides or suicides. Uh, I know almost every. Uh, Paramedic EMT would disagree with that. I'm not sure where they got their their data from, but attempted suicides and suicides increase during the during the holidays. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They. The, and on the psychology end of it, they say, no, that's not a contributing factor. But we, we see it on the street. I don't know if it's a reporting thing or not, but they do increase during the, during the holidays. They also increase in May. What happens in May? Graduation. Graduation. College and high school. The attempted suicides and suicides increase then. We we see this. We we lived it, so we we know it's true. Okay. So uh, anyway, watch these guys. Uh, most of the time, like 
most of the time the uh, the dispatcher is going to pick up the phone and, and they're going to pick up things and I'll say, okay, this is a, a psychological emergency, this is attempted suicide or whatever, and you're going to stage and the police are going to go there and make sure that the scene is safe and then you're going to go in. 99.9% .9 of the time, the police are already there. The dispatcher is telling you to stage and not go in and then they send the police in they clear the scene, then you then you come in and treat the patient. You don't come in when the scene is unsecured in a psycho, uh, psychiatric emergency or, or any kind of violence. Family violence. It could be, just be family violence. They could be hearing the, you know, some cussing and screaming in the background, and they won't send you in until the police go in. So any any type of violence, they're not going to do that. So the person that has lost control, okay, violence, violence here, this, this person that you're coming in contact with, the, the pacing, they, they could be shouting, threatening, cursing, throwing things, clenching teeth or fists, that sounds like me Sunday on the golf course, I hope I, I wasn't violent, but you got the shanks, you put out to the side, or golfer with the shanks, most of these don't take their place. Okay, so anyway, watch watch for that. Watch out for that person. That suicidal person. They may not. Uh, they want to hurt themselves, but they'll hurt you, keeping them from hurting themselves. Okay. A, a, a lot of times, especially if they have a gun or something, they don't mind shooting you. They won't shoot themselves. They took a bunch of pills. They won't shoot you. I mean, they won't shoot themselves because they don't want to mess this up, right? But they don't mind shooting you to keep, keep you from stopping them. So be, be super, super careful. During your rideouts and stuff, the EMS crews will watch over you very carefully. So if they say, you wait, wait in the truck for this one. Don't take it personally. Wait in the truck. Okay? They, they want to make sure that everything is is good to go. They're, they're not going to put you at any kind of risk for you to get see some crazy person. Okay, they're they're going to make sure that you are uh, you're okay. Hey, but you're not to you're not to diagnose. That's not your business, really. Uh, things could be really calm really calm and then all of a sudden chaos so during this transport with this psychiatric patient always be like on guard be aware of your surroundings make sure that you have an exit out of the room that you might be in during your assessment and make sure that you have an exit out of the ambulance right make sure that your your one of your exits are not blocked like the side door would be your exit you wouldn't walk past the patient to get out the back door. You just go out the side door and shut the door. Let them tear it apart. Who cares? Uh, but it, it gets chaos, chaotic really quick. And many times I've had my partner stop in the middle of the road, hit the lights, and we have to call the police again to, to get things back under control. You know, but uh, it, it can get... Your your goal is not to fight with the patient, okay? Uh, so uh, you let the police handle that. Suicidal ideation it means they're having thoughts about suicide, okay? So listen to what the patient's saying. They're saying, "Oh, I had enough of this. Enough of what?" And they say, "Life." Then boom. That's it. They've lost all their rights as a patient. You treat them under implied consent. They just told you that they have had enough of life. So they only need that one statement, really. Uh, people make that mistake a lot. They make that statement just to say it, but, but it marks them. Once they make that statement, then a suicidal type statement then they have to have a psyche valve done at the hospital. 
until they're they're cleared through the uh, through their sake valve. I, I can't tell you how many times. Oh, I didn't really mean that. It doesn't matter now. You know, can't take those words back. Okay, homicidal. Super careful. This person, they want to kill somebody, right? Okay, so uh, they have thoughts of, of murder, so the uh, homicide. So be super aware of them. Again, both cases, the police are already involved in this. Okay. Some drugs can give you homicidal thoughts. Uh, some of the psychiatric drugs, they give you homicidal thoughts. Even the commercial tells you, if you start thinking of suicide and homicide, stop taking the medication. You know, it's one, one of the side effects. Okay. Uh, like I said, always need for law enforcement on both of these or, or any type of things that the uh, might be in danger. I mean, we the scene. We want to make sure the scene is always safe for us. So, one thing, it and and it's true. Everybody has their breaking point, right? Uh, I I tell people there's a thin line in life between sanity and being insane, right? We we really do walk this thin line. So that this is not really thin, but. You're okay on this line, okay? Bad things start to happen to you for some reason. Uh, who knows what? And you sort of fall off on, on this side. <laughs> I mean, if, uh, what was that thing? I can't remember the exact quote. But this guy was saying that we're, we're only about four or five bad events in our life from having a psychological breakdown. You know, and it, it is true. It's very true. Okay? Uh, maybe relate to you. Here, you're walking that thin line in college. You're working real hard. You're going into medicine. You're going to be a doctor. You're working real hard. You don't have too many things this, this way that will keep you from rational to over the edge, right? And it's not behavioral. It's not bad behavior. It's psychological. This guy was talking about like, like families. The, let's say the dad, we just used the dad in this case. Dad loses his job. Right? He was the primary uh, money maker. Loses his job. Goes from making good money to zero. Okay? Can't pay his bills. Can't buy groceries. Eviction comes, right? They repossess the car. Uh, the mom, his wife and kids have to go home and move in with the in-laws, right? So if you start looking these things down, all of a sudden they lose their home. Now they're considered homeless. They don't have a home. Okay, they can't get a job because they don't have a home. <laughs> so you start doing here, and then you, you fall off on that thin, thin line. There's only a, a few things that can take place. What about a college student? What's, what would happen? Bad days. Um, fill up classes. Social. Yeah. yeah. Because of this, that thing, and then uh, yeah, failure, not graduating. Mom just paid. Mom and dad just paid a hundred thousand dollars out for your education, <laughs> and you fail. You not only fail yourself, you fail mom and dad, right? Just think all that pressure, all that buildup. I mean, I don't want to be killjoy here. You know, just sort of 
like telling you there's there's a few things here that so we, we all walk sort of that thin line right so don't be too judgmental with with these psychiatric patients okay because it, it could happen very very quickly okay what do you need to get back up in into this place here from here <laughs> that would that would do for me. Just give me a bucket of homemade vanilla. I'm back in it. You you know what I think in and guessing here, okay? You know what it really takes? What it really takes? If you have any friends left, it would take one friend to tell you, hey, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Everybody's going to fail. Everybody's going to do these things. <laughs> huh? I mean, it still sucks, but you just need somebody to tell you, hey, it, it's okay. It's it's not the end of the world. Okay? What, huh? My mom would say it's the end of the world. What I, what I would do in my case, i say, do this. Check the radio. Everybody got a, you got a radio pulse? Then you're okay. All right? Everything else can be fixed. You have a pulse. You're alive. Everything else can be fixed. Okay? Yep. It may suck to, to try to recoup these things, but these are just things. These are not something that can't be recuperated, right? Especially social. Uh, just my opinion. I, I think you guys you get way out of hand with that. Uh, you think too much about what people think about you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's true. You think about you think too much about what people think about you, and that's not going to change anything. Okay. I I see it all thing. I mean, 24 years in EMS, you see it all relationships. Uh, you know, oh, we dated all through high school, now we're in college, and he left me. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you took a bunch of pills because of that. You know? Why don't you go find another boyfriend? There's like a gazillion of them out there. Okay? Anyway, uh, you, you get what I mean, right? So... Uh, there's, but back back to that thing there. There's very few people that I value their opinion. Other people's opinion, I don't value that much. And it, it it may seem sort of like, Ugh, but it it keeps you very healthy when you don't value other people's opinion that much. There's there's a short list of people's opinion that I that I value. It was yours until you started talking like Blue Bell. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> you didn't make the cut. <laughs> you started talking crazy. Uh, anyway, uh, think about that because people's opinion can bring you down, especially in this world of social media and all that stuff. You know. Little Susie writes something bad about you on social media, or, or talking bad about you. Go go punch her in the face and say, you know, stop that, aren't you? Or I'm gonna come punch you in the face again. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Don't don't take what she's saying, her opinion that that strongly. All right. Anyway, uh, mainly just principles we we're talking about. Okay, no uh, social norms. Some some here social norms are different from from uh, people group to people group. So I understand some of that as, as well. Okay, when if, get in because you're in, in medicine you're associated around with all different types of people group you just have to understand what 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 that is okay uh, so
So techniques, look at this, we're almost done. Give me five minutes. Approach them slowly, listen to them. Try not to sort of interrupt them because you they get irritated with that, okay? They won't speak, let them speak, but you know, you, this, this, this call here is gonna take a little time. Okay, sort of sort out, so be careful. Calm, keep your distance from them. Arms length at, at, at the closest, right? Don't, don't get too close to them. Uh, make sure that you have an egress out of, of where you are. The, uh, anyway, be honest with them. Most of them, even though they're psychotic, they can pick out that you're just lying to them. They're trying, you're, you're just trying to get them to do what you want them to do, you know. Like uh, that guy in the middle of the road, I go up to him and say, Hey man, uh, you're in the middle of the road. You need to get out of the road, okay? You're going to get hit by a car. I know that you don't understand that, but let's go over here because it's, it's sort of nuts to be in the middle of the, of the road, okay? <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> yeah, you Never lie to the patient. <laughs> Never lie to the patient. <laughs> hey man, you're crazy for being out in the middle of the road, right? Can you keep some things quiet, just not mention it? Can you keep some things quiet, just not mention it? Can you keep some things quiet, just not mention it? Don't play along. <laughs> right? Use the filter. Don't lie to them. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't leave them long. There's your once you make patient contact with them, they're your responsibility. Okay, so that suicidal patient, if you they say I gotta go to the bathroom, and you let them go to the bathroom, they kill themselves in the bathroom. That's on you. Legally. Legally, that's on you. Once they tell you, um, you know, once you determine that they're suicidal, you can't leave them by themselves. That's why in the hospital that person's always watching them. They always have someone watching them, okay? Because you, you, uh, legally, uh, even treating them under implied consent, you're legally responsible for that. Uh, clear exit, make sure, okay? They can be un unpredictable. Uh, so be be careful. That's where law enforcement really helps out with, uh, and don't get into a fight with them. There's a lot of mechanisms for suicide. My my experience is that if they want to commit suicide, they're going to do it. Okay, they're just going to do it. Uh, there's nobody that's going to stop them. And uh, if you intervene, and they won't really want to do it, they're they're going to find another way to do it. So. Uh, it's unfortunate, but a lot of times people get help and they change their mind, right? But in, historically, once that mindset is made up, they're done. And usually you show up after the fact. All right. So size up, really good size up. Look around. Make sure that uh, you're, you're, you're with the patient. Usually have weapons is a big deal. Make sure that, you know... You know, this guy here, this picture here, I'd already be gone. Bubba has a big pie. I'm out of there. Don't turn around walking away. Huh? I'm like, that's something that Mr. Electricity's don't do with you when the police get here. They're going to tase you. You're going to drop that pot because they're going to zap you with a thousand gazillion volts, okay? He doesn't drop that pop, he's going to get shot. <laughs> okay. But I definitely wouldn't be hiding here. I'd be in my truck waiting for the police to clear that mess up, okay? Uh, good general impression, good, good patient assessment. Listen to them. Use open-ended questions, not... Use closed-ended questions. I don't know why they still try to teach you guys to use open-ended questions that makes them talk more. You actually want them to talk less, okay? Don't offer your opinion. 
just because you took psychology in, in high school, that doesn't mean that you can offer your opinion up to them, okay? Uh, you know, even if they ask you, what, what do you think's wrong with me? You know, don't go to one extreme and say, well, well you, you're crazy. <laughs> you know, you're a nut. <laughs> so don't go there, okay? But don't start, well, I, I think you have schizophrenia. You know? <laughs> Don't, don't do those things. Just say, man, just be neutral. I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with you, man. Just wait till we get to the hospital. We'll, we'll figure this out. Figure this out, okay? You and the staff and whoever else comes in, figure that out, okay? Uh, like, <laughs> if they have problems with, like, if it's a war type thing and they have problems with that, don't bring that up. <laughs> Yeah, don't bring, don't bring their problems up. I had that happen for my partner. Guy yeah, was sort of having little flashbacks from Vietnam, and he kept bringing that up. I'm like, dude, shut up. <laughs> We're talking about it. This is what he's having problems about, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Firm and clear. Use restraints, and this is it. This is the last part here. When we start looking at at restraints. Okay, there's a certain way that we do restrain people when we get to the picture. Okay, uh, supine with multiple straps, cover the face in case they start spitting. Okay, so they put it on your breather on with oxygen. <laughs> okay, put it on your breather on or a mask on. You can't uh, put them prone anymore. Back in the good, good old days, what we would do is we would take this patient, we would throw them prone on their belly on the backboard, we would strap them down with their head turned like this, okay, away from us, so to the right, you know, away from us, and then we would either, we would put another backboard on top of them, and we would sandwich them in between two backboards and strap them up, and, uh, okay, so, somebody has a little respiratory problem with that. And you take away all the good things. You know. <laughs> but that was back in the day. We we throw them down on the ground. We put them on that backboard. We and then we'd sandwich them and, and strap them together. Like they go in the hospital on the on the spot like this. You know. <laughs> are they in the you know the hospital? Staff, are they fighting you? No, <laughs> they're they're sandwiched. You know, but. Uh, Somewhere along the line, it caused some respiratory problems with some patients. The EMS wasn't necessarily watching the patient. They had respiratory compromise because they were crushed. What was your question? How was this ever legal? Like, did y'all like sit in classes? Here's the proper way. You, know, you, you hold down. I throw the board on top. <laughs> yeah, we would. Awesome. Someone sit on it. Yeah. And y'all didn't think like this is odd. Like maybe we shouldn't do that. No, we thought, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It crushed. It crushed. It crushed all the crazy out of them. All right, but. The good old days are gone, okay? So make sure that uh, the takedown, now this was a test question somewhere, the takedown uh, re requires uh, four providers. You see the way that they're doing it? There's a legal way to take the patient down, okay? Uh, they do that. You can't go hit them with the pipe and knock them down, okay? So you, you, you have to do a takedown legal way. So you have two that would grab the arm and leg, do sort of a backward thing with the arm, and then these two guys would grab the extremities and, and lower, not slam the patient down <laughs> all the time, but it, sometimes it, the patient does hit the ground a little hard, okay? And then uh, restrain all four extremities, okay? And don't unrestrain the patient until they get medication or you have enough hands to hold the feet and legs down again, okay? That would hurt, get kicked in the face with that big boot. So you have to keep that in mind. All right, so 
Yeah, so four, four, four providers, okay, if, if you ever get into this situation, let me tell you the likelihood of you actually having to get in that situation is low because the police are going to be there and that's what they're going to do. Right. They're going to say, Bubba, you're going to the hospital and you're going to get on that cot and if you don't, we're going to tase you. <laughs> and then they, uh, they tase them with pepper spray or something and or, or the police would actually come in and, and restrain the patient and then put them on the cot and then uh, you, you time down. A side note, important side note really a little bit is they handcuff the patient and they leave the handcuffs on the patient that a police officer has to go with you to the hospital okay because once they put the handcuffs on legally some sort of legality that the patient is actually under arrest and you can't uh, transport a patient that's under arrest without the, the person there that has the authority to put the patient under arrest you don't have that authority as an EMT, okay. So just a little side note: they cuff them, they have to go. So what they do is they cuff them to the to the uh, the rails, and then we tie them down, and they take their cuffs, and then they leave, okay. So the, they won't necessarily go with you; they'll follow you. Once you have a problem, you can stop, and they they get back in there. But right, and then uh, tie them across. See the way their arms are tied across. Okay, and then strap down. That's a good. See the cravat? They're using cravats to tie them down. They're not moving. He could still spit, but you put a mask on him so he wouldn't spit. Okay. Questions there? Uh, implied consent, okay, is uh, what you would treat the, the patient under. And then they, if they are harm to themselves or others, you can't, they can't refuse treatment. Okay, so you transport them without consent, but you're transporting them under, under implied consent. And then, like we said, reasonable force. That's very vague, but reasonable force to take somebody down and restrain them. Okay, if they're fighting you, then that force is more and more, right? takes a lot of force to put somebody down on the ground that doesn't want to go down on the ground. Uh, that's something the video doesn't, all these videos, they don't, you don't realize that it, it takes a lot, of, a lot of force to put someone down on the ground that doesn't want to go down. <clears throat> okay. And of course law enforcement's always there with you. Have witnesses, oh this is a big thing, we'll, we'll finish up. Witnesses, uh, same gender as the patient, uh, I had a little psychotic teenager that we were taking to children's one day and the parents wanted to follow us in the name so I'm like oh no. <laughs> no, no, no you're going with me and you're going to actually sit in the back uh, or we're not going and so the uh, you, you have to be very careful that uh, whoever is in this state they can uh, make a false allegations against you so you have to protect yourself and most of that time I protect myself with so another witness coming with me okay parent police officer somebody okay all right questions there